few weeks ago, I received a curious email from a self-proclaimed Indian scammer that wanted to work together with me to expose and shut down the call center that he was working in. He promised me that he will be able to hack the devices inside of the call center for me and also give us a unique insight into the scamming business by filming in and outside of the call center's physical location. A way to leave PBD with uh, and I, uh, I remember you know where the store is, right? yeah. Okay. Of course, I was intrigued. I accepted his offer and laid personal contact with him so that we could discuss a plan to successfully dismantle this fraudulent call center. I first needed to verify that this guy was not wasting my time, but he already proved himself before I even asked by sending me his exact GPS position and he was indeed in India. He also sent me this footage of a birthday celebration that he had recorded a couple months before in a different call center, so I knew that this guy wasn't messing around. <laughs> The first day we talked to each other, it was also going to be our insider's first day in the office since he had only just been accepted to the job. Prior to being accepted to this position, he had already been working in the international scam sector for a few years, but decided it would be a better way to make money working with good guys dismantling these centers rather than actually scamming people. He does the complete opposite on his shifts. Thank you for calling Amazon, how may I help you? Okay, so I would advise you then not to worry about it because it's a scam, okay? Have a great day, bye-bye. The first thing I learned about this call center was its location, which the insider revealed to me was an office space in Biwadi, Rajasthan, a town in the north of India, which is just a few hours away from New Delhi. We quickly discussed the plan and how we were going to physically compromise the machines, and then it was time for the insider to head towards the center, ready to clock into his first shift. As per usual, once you enter a scam call center, you have to hand in your phone, so I did not hear back from him until about 11 hours later, and that's when he gave me the news that the boss was smart enough to fully fix on every single system to make it impossible to visit any webpage besides the ones they actually use to scam people. So what system is the footage from we have been seeing on the screen if we weren't able to hack them? Well, after our initial plan had failed on the first day, we came up with a second plan of using the scammers their own remote connectivity software against them. Instead of him connecting to a victim, I will be the one connecting to his computer and drop off everything necessary to compromise the call center's network and devices. This heist was successful and I now have complete access to this Windows 10 laptop that our insider is assigned to, but the only problem is that this laptop isn't really interesting as it's not being used to take calls, the webcam is taped and our insider isn't actually there to scam anybody. His only job in this Amazon scam variant is to receive phone numbers from colleagues, with which he then logs into the victim's Amazon account by sending out a one-time password to that number and grabs their information so that the other scammers can convince people that they are truly from Amazon. How so? Well, they will read out things like the victim's last order on the account, their address, name, card numbers, and pretend that this information came directly from Amazon's database. And I believe you're using this account from Illinois. Machini, Illinois, right? McHenry, you're living at McHenry, Illinois, right? And what I see over here, miss, there is a couple of credit cards and a debit cards also linked with your Amazon account. It's your, yeah, it's your bank cards and your credit card, which I see over here, which is under your name. So you have only this card with you, your debit card ending in 2523, right? Oh wow, okay, this guy knows everything about me, so he has to be from Amazon, right? Well, no, it's actually an Indian fraudster using a technique of logging into people's accounts, which is becoming increasingly popular among scammers. With Amazon, it's not as dangerous. The scammers could perhaps order a gift card for themselves if you have your cards linked, but usually Amazon catches onto this and marks it as a suspicious order. The problem becomes a lot bigger when, for example, PayPal scammers are using this method to gain access to your finances. Here we can see a scammer casually changing somebody's PayPal password with an OTP and gaining access to their account from which they could do a lot more damage than from an Amazon account. Anyways, moving back to the insider's Amazon center, the footage we have just now seen was recorded from a different laptop and also has a different scammer operating the device. It turns out that the same software I showed before, from which the scammers can communicate with each other on their local network, is not so useful when there are hackers present in that same network. It was, however, surprisingly difficult to pivot from the insider's machine to the other devices since all the scammers in this call center had a fully locked down Windows 10 machine with antivirus and they were even cautious enough to use Tor browser in combination with a VPN to hide their location. Because of all these security measures I was unable to spread to all agents but on three machines I was able to bypass the security which included the laptop of the boss. <laughs> Very unfortunately for Irfan, he forgot to protect his own device with all the tools that he did use on his agents, which also included him forgetting to use a VPN. I hope that you guys as my viewers are smarter than Irfan and do protect your online identity by using a premium virtual private network. If not, you're in luck because I have a long running partnership with NordVPN and they are the sponsor of today's video. Like I've said before, I'm very keen on protecting yourself online and hiding your IP address plays a huge part in that protection. Here's an example. We can see that with a scammer who is not using a VPN, I'm easily able to grab his IP address from which I now know his location 
I can exploit vulnerabilities in his network to get into his devices or simply just shut down his internet access completely. Were the scammer to have used Nord, this would not have been possible and I don't know what's stopping him from protecting himself, but it's certainly not because Nord is hard to use. With their intuitive interface, you can mask your online identity by the click of just one button and I myself even use the option to automatically connect my VPN for me in combination with the kill switch option that completely shuts down my internet access when not connected to one of the 5,400 NordVPN servers. Please make sure you keep yourself protected online and get NordVPN on a huge discount with my link nordvpn.com slash which includes a two-year plan with 62% off and one additional month for free. Again, only way you go to nordvpn.com slash Anyways, like I mentioned, I managed to spread to the boss's machine on which I found a lot of interesting things, but I first wanted to monitor the agent laptop that I spread to to see which version of the Amazon scam these guys have come up with. I see over here, it is an international hacking attack which is going on in your account. And what I see over here, it is not your Amazon account which is compromised right now. It's your IP address which is compromised. These hackers, they hack down your internet and once your internet got hacked, they get into your device and they are monitoring each and every activity that you're doing in your device, I have a bad news for you. These hackers, they are very clever. They are using your credit line over here and what they had done, they applied a fresh loan, like a new loan from Amazon of $5,000. They have the access of your social security as well. So right now, this is a case of identity theft. That is the first phase of the scam done, which is the scammer saying a bunch of scary words like hacker, identity theft, and credit line to scare victims into doing something stupid. That something stupid is going to be driving to a local grocery store and buying thousands of dollars in gift cards for these scammers. In this case, we need to put a block on those hackers. We need to remove these intruders. In order to put a block on those hackers, I'm going to take the help of the Amazon secured server and I'm going to open a blocking file for your account. So I'm putting this call on hold. Please do not mind my silence. Okay, I am not able to generate any blocking codes online for your account as your account is compromised from the international locations. In this case, what we're going to do, we are going to take the help of the offline blocking codes. It's like a 16-digit alphanumerical code which you find on the back of the Amazon privilege card. I see over here exactly you don't have any Amazon store available in your area. You have a third-party store in your area where you find this card. Do you have any store named Meyer in your area? Luckily, like most people, this victim hung up the call as soon as the scammer mentioned that she had to get in her car and drive to a local grocery store. But sometimes people do obey the scammers and get in their car for them. And really, I'm sorry, you're like my grandmother and just you're having this problem. And how much time you will take to get over there, ma'am, in the uh, CVS? 32 minutes. Oh, that's wonderful. Once you will be there, let me know, okay? Are you there? Okay, this is a target card. Like, these are the security cards through which we will we are gonna block the hackers okay you'll have to go and get four security cards each one of five hundred dollar and that can be target or sephora okay I was happy to see that this victim also realized it was a scam even though it took her a little longer and whenever somebody does actually go inside of the store I always make sure to call them to prevent the scam from happening yes hello uh, I want to report a fraud um, somebody's coming inside of your store in like a minute or two to buy gift cards for scammers so I just wanted to ask you if you could maybe warn that person that they are being scammed by people pretending to be from Amazon all right thank you can you hear me? Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you, but uh, I am not going to continue this call. What happened, sir? What's wrong with you? Can you hear me? Can, can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me, sir? It might seem hard to believe that people actually fall for this, but it's usually minor coincidences that make victims get sucked into these kinds of scams. It's kind of weird because like a week ago, I got a thing from Yahoo wanting to verify that it is me mm -hmm. and that I need to change my uh, password right away, so maybe this is why. Whatever it is that convinces people of this pitch, it seems to be activated in a lot of victims since these guys steal from about five people a day. So how much money do they make with this? Well, for that we would have to know how much they steal per person on average. And the thing is that before they even steal from people, I already know how much they are going to steal because of their interaction with the boss. I haven't yet shown a lot of his role in this scam, but he actually does play a huge part, from which the first involvement is when one of his 15 scam agents has a new victim that is convinced and is a serious contender.
send her to steal money from. This is when the agent sends a message to the boss on LMC, asking him to send out a fake text message to the victim, pretending like Amazon has provided them with sufficient credit to pay for the gift cards. This text message credit amount is the equivalent of how much they're going to steal from this person, which on average is about $1,500. And that means working five days a week, five victims a day, that these guys rack in about $150,000 a month. Furthermore, the boss also gets messages on LMC from his agents whenever people are messing with them, giving him the task of blocking that person's phone number. See, if you wanna, if you think, if you think you are smart enough to waste your time and waste my time, forget about it, first of all. No, that, I am not able to change your thinking here. If you, if you think that I am a scammer, then let it be, alright? Let someone ruin your information and Another text message test the boss can get from his agents during a scam call is to claim that the hackers have successfully been blocked, which he only sends out after people have already purchased the gift cards. And the final thing you will then get a message for is the agent forwarding those gift cards so that the boss can launder them into actual money. Kinda. He's actually not the guy that does the laundering itself, he simply just forwards the codes into a telegram group with two other guys, Sam and Ronnie, including the value of the gift cards and the names of the scammers that have obtained them. Ronnie is then the actual boss of the operation, working from home and taking the money, whilst the boss in the call center I've been watching watching is his left hand who solely operates as a floor manager for him. How does Ronnie then launder this money? Well, he adds the gift cards, which are either Apple or Target, to his own account and starts ordering items to a money mule in the United States, which are mostly high value electronics like laptops, TVs or phones that are easy for the mule to resell on sites like eBay and OfferUp. If Ronnie is the money man, then who is Sam? Well, Sam seems to be the phone guy responsible for getting call flow to this fraudulent campaign because every time there was a problem with the phone system, the boss in the call center would ask him for help. One time Sam even connected to the floor manager's computer with any desk to help resolve a login issue and that's when I managed to reverse the connection on him. We can indeed see that Sam has a lot of files on his computer to do with the scammers their call system. He's logged into the admin panel and has a list of emails that they use in their fraudulent campaign stored on his computer desktop. I've reported all these emails to Voxify which is their PBX host but they have yet to respond to me and the scammers their phone numbers are unfortunately still up and running. Not only have I reported them to their phone provider I also tried making a police report against them since I have their exact location, footage inside of the call center and of course the footage of them actually scamming people. The physical footage was provided to me by the insider, who in total sent me one picture of the outside of the building, one video inside of the call center, and one video of him walking into the call center. Then what you're doing is you're going up the stair here, all the way number two level floor. Level two number floor. And this one is office, look there, is a scam call center, inside there. Is a scam call center. After providing me with these three pieces of material, the insider safely left the call center after only working there for two days. But before leaving, he did make sure to untape the webcam of his assigned device. <laughs> My report with the Rajasthan Police Help Desk was made about three weeks ago, but they have not responded either. For now, the only thing I can do is keep saving victims to ruin business for these scammers until they find this video and have to fully reset their entire operation. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe before you click off. If you want to support the channel financially, there's a Patreon and PayPal link in the description. I hope you guys have a nice day. Stay safe, stay cautious. Bye-bye.